This time we're going to snub the piece off. What I've done is set the dynamometer above at peak hold. The dynamometer below here between the porter wrap and the sling at the base of the tree is also on peak hold and we'll measure the force at both points once again. Now the first thing I want to say is that this is not what you want to do to your equipment. This was a test. This was for the sake of looking at the kind of numbers that we can generate the types of force that we subject our equipment to if we're not decelerating pieces and or if we're cutting pieces that are too large. So let's have a look at the numbers. We've generated 7,326 pounds of force at the rigging point. Now clearly we've overloaded some parts of the system if we want to be consistent with our 10 to 1 for both hardware and rope. So these ropes are going to be slated as having been overloaded, these slings. Here at the dynamometer between the sling and the porter app, we've generated just over 3,500 pounds. So again, you notice that the rope is experiencing around half of what the rigging point experiences, and that's because of the two parts of rope acting on the rigging point. Now we've taken the dynamometer off a of peak hold so we can get our weight, and the dynamometer is showing me 631 pounds. So this piece is actually a little bit lighter than the last one. But we generated considerably more force because we snubbed it off and we didn't slow it, decelerate it. Now clearly this is worst case scenario. We, we have snubbed the piece off, we did not decelerate it. However, the slings did move and all of these things played a role in absorbing the energy. The piece slammed into the tree, okay, that accounted for some energy being transferred to the tree and away from the ropes, the rigging point, both above and below. The reason that we've done this is because it's important for us to realize what the worst case scenario can be. If we're using equipment and methods that allow us to decelerate pieces, if we're not cutting pieces that are too big, we can manage the forces, we can manage the friction so that we can decelerate accurately as opposed to, for example, using natural crotch rigging or tree wraps where it's a little bit more of a guessing game as to how much friction we'll need. Many, many times we underestimate the forces that we actually subject our equipment to. That is the purpose for us, using the dynamometers so we can get an idea of the kind of forces that can be generated, both with deceleration methods and if a piece is snubbed off, not allowed to run. It's important that we have an idea of what kind of forces versus what kind of weight and what kind of a rigging situation and scenario we've built.